Daniel Gard. He's the National Marketing and Sales Manager for Australia, and we'll be kicking off the formalities today. Yeah, thank you. I'll just flick the screen. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for taking the time to come out and listen to the Y Sharp story. It's great to see so many of the press actually turn up. Um, it's exciting times for us here at Sharp. I guess some of you that know us in the past from a consumer electronics company and have wrote stories about us in the past in terms of the days of LCD TV and other products we brought to market. Um, our business has gone through a massive transformation. I guess a lot of you are aware of what's happened in the last couple of years in terms of the capital injection and 66% acquisition from our parent company and partner Foxconn Industries. So we've seen that sort of materialise now over the last two years and trickle down to a, a country level. So today is really to talk about what's happening both at a corporate level and then at what's happening in Australia, and hence the, you know, the gathering today, and also to talk about our new partner and our new channels. So what's happened in the last couple of years is we've had new LCD and LED plants announced uh, in the media globally around Foxconn in terms of investment in the future of LCD and OLED type technologies and 4 and 8K ecosystems, yeah? So we're starting to see that materialise. We've seen leadership technology come through as a result of the cross-pollination. Sharp Corporation is very much still a separate company, and I want to stress that. Um, we weren't acquired. There was an investment and a capital injection into Sharp Corporation globally in Sharp Japan. But what we've seen in the last two years is really that technology and R&D base that we brought to the table, as well as a channel to market and a brand, uh, has actually paid off in spades for the Foxconn company, which is very much a manufacturing-based organisation. So, all the announcements I've read overseas in you know, Asian press as well as United States <coughs> press, it always leads with Sharp Corporation of America or Sharp Corporation uh, Japan and in terms of either acquisition or R&D or development or expansion uh, plans, right? So we very much are a standalone company, um, but we're very you know, proud to be a partner of and a subsidiary of Foxconn Industries. So what we've been doing lately is resourcing our channel. So today you'll get to meet the new face of the visual solutions team in Australia and the, and the manager of that division, the head of the division, Stuart will talk in a minute about that, and the product manager that supports the product who's just come back from our NARA R&D facility in Japan. So really exciting times for us and I guess one of the key differentials from us is we're not just another uh, panel or component maker, but the whole approach for Sharp is the smart office um, concept. So the Internet of Things, as we all know, is, is a booming thing. Um, and Foxconn and Sharp, we were the first ones to announce recently the partnership with Amazon uh, and Alexa in terms of smart MFD, smart print devices, where you'll be able to walk up and tell the machine, you know, double-sided, photocopied, stapled booklet, and that will come. Um, we can literally, from a presentation on our devices, flick from the device, which looks pretty whizzy, an icon on the screen of a print, a print file, flick it straight to the device, and you'll see the machine fire up and start to print. So you're going to see more and more integration with other Sharp products and Sharp technologies coming through, which will differentiate us from being just a, a panel maker. Yeah. So as I talked about, the initial first announcement, which was exciting for us for this region is where we will get product from in the future, was the $8.8 billion plant announced in Guangzhou, um, which comes online in 2019. So that's one of the big things that will feed product to us in this part of the world. And obviously the thing that happened recently in Wisconsin with the $10 billion US uh, announcement and investment in the great state of Wisconsin in terms of an LCD plant in North America, which ironically, um, there is not an LCD manufacturer in North America, go figure. And that will focus on both um, phone display product for Apple and made in America in the whole Apple product range. It'll also feed OEM makers and, and industry brands like RCA and other products as well as Sharp being sold in the North American market that'll come from that development in 2020. Um, the good news is for Sharp, since we got back on track, um, our profits have been soaring, 270% profit increase April, December, uh, which is fantastic in terms of the viability of the business, because obviously Sharp pre-GFC uh, you know, had started to feel the impact of the LCD and LED market uh, penetration and smart TV market change. But I think the real statement is the AK ecosystem everywhere in the world at the moment, we're, we're um, demonstrating and pioneering uh, leadership technology that's all geared around uh, gigabit downloads, 5G and the future, yeah, in terms of mobility and fast internet speeds and fast um, cellular speeds in the future. Right? So 8K is really geared around mobility and high speed data transfers in the future. So that's where we're heading. Everyone's talking 4K, but we're looking at 2020 and beyond when these other factories come online. Um, so business solutions in Australia for us for visual. Uh, we've got a new team, which Stuart will talk about. 
certainly got a lot of new enthusiasm in the business because we've got a lot of great things to talk about, great product. Um, we've got new channels, hence today is the announcement of our partner and distributor for Visual Solutions, which is Madison Technology. So welcome Madison and Ken, thank you. Thank you. Uh, look forward to hearing from Ken in a moment. Obviously the crossover products, we've got several Foxconn uh, manufactured products here today that we can show you. Sharp R&D, but the economies of scale and the quality and the manufacturing base that Foxconn delivers. Just to put that into some kind of scale, if you don't understand the breadth and depth of Foxconn, pretty much every smartphone in the world, bar one, is manufactured in a Foxconn factory. So it's not just the 10 million handsets a quarter for Apple, uh, every time they release a new iPhone X or 8 series, but it's also you know the number two selling phone in, in China, which is Oppo, the number one selling phone in China, which is Huawei, uh, our own Nokia product, because we obviously bought the Nokia company from Microsoft, uh, so the Nokia product, which is gaining traction in the market now, which is a Foxconn produced product as well, and a Foxconn company. Um, the Sharp handsets as well, we sell Sharp phones in other regions of the world, soon to come to Australia under the Sharp brand. Um, and pretty much every other major brand you can think of, so hundreds of millions of handsets a quarter, all come out of Foxconn factories. Talking print, 33 million HP printers a year. Um, every PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Wii, and a plethora of other products, Dell NAS servers, everything comes out of Foxconn factories. So that'll give you the kind of scale of Foxconn. $135 billion US annual turnover, second biggest company in the world. So that's, that's our parent company, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, so I'll hand you over to Stuart again. Can't emphasize enough, thanks for making the time to hear about Sharp, both corporately and what we're doing in Australia, and I'd love to talk to you after we, we get through the formalities, so thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, to look, cover off on a local level how we came to this point today, um, obviously with uh, the hiring of both Jonathan and I, um, the Sharp brand is basically, it's always been there, but re-entering the market properly uh, in the sense it's been driven from a pro, or pro AV um, aspect this time, rather as a, a, another product within the, uh, within the product base that we've, we've had for many, many years. Hence, we've got to here. We've invested already in both, obviously, Jonathan and I. We've got more staff on in Queensland. We already had one very, um, one very good uh, uh, salesperson in Victoria. In saying that, we needed more reach, and getting out into the into the pro AV, we looked, we were looking to do that via distributor. We didn't want just another uh, a box moving distributor. We wanted someone that would actually own the brand. Um, hence, in my previous life, I'd had a lot of experience, very good experience with Madison knew them quite well. The other appealing factor, they didn't have a, they didn't have a panel, um, excuse me, they weren't distributing panels as well. On top of that, they had a, a vast range of other products that surround in the, in the audio, in the audio visual market, that surround and will also complement um, our panels as we move along. Thus, producing the best, uh, best result for, I suppose, demonstrating the, the, the panels and in many different environments moving into the, for, uh, moving into the future, especially with some of the product we've got coming. So for us, after some great meetings with the guys at Madison, it turned out to be a very, very logical move. Um, they have a, a great sales force, they have a highly experienced um, a marketing team, and obviously they have a great moment in the market that's been out there for 20 years. On, uh, and plus, sorry, on, on a local level for us here, I suppose we're not trying to uh, become the next Samsung or LG, although we wouldn't mind their numbers. Um, what we are trying to do is base our business on great service, and great product, and that that service encompasses from beginning to end, being a brand, a brand that we can rely on. So, from our, our our perspective, that's where we're coming off. We've got the great support from head office from Japan and locally. We also have um, Michelle, who's great with all our our new uh, marketing and, and that side of the business. So there will be a very prof professional, I suppose, approach to the market moving forward. So look, um, Dan covered it off uh, very very well. Um, Prior on, on where we're heading as an organisation. From our point of view, we're all very keen. It's all very positive moving forward. So this is our first day. So look, that's enough for me. What I'll do, I'll hand over to the General Manager of um, Madison, Ken Gopp. Over to you, Ken. Ken Thanks, Gopp. Thanks, Rob. Excuse the cheat sheet. I'm not as uh, obviously well prepared as these guys. Hey, Philip, how are you? Um, so uh, thanks, Stuart. Uh, as Stuart said, I'm Ken Cobb, General Manager Ken. of uh, Broadcast and Audio Visual Business Unit at Madison Technologies. Um, and thanks to everyone for, for coming along and, and thanks to the team at Sharp for, for hosting us today. Um, some of you don't know us. Um, basically a bit of history, we're a 27 year old 
Australian privately owned company that specialises in the distribution of technology products through five specialist business units. Um, basically the company represents major brands across multiple technology disciplines. That's in broadcast and audio visual where myself and the team here today sit, telco, comms and data, um, and uh, we also own a, a specialist cable manufacturing company which is quite large called Garland Cables. We, uh, we, we've extended to, to manufacture some products for the NBN over the past few years and as such the company has a manufacturing arm known as Madison Manufacturing and it's now become the Madison Group of which the broadcast and audio visual business is part of it. So we've got a national footprint, uh, offices, warehousing, resources in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, recently having expanded into Auckland, New Zealand as well. As I said before, the part of the business where we're involved is, is the broadcast and audio visual and particularly AV product distribution of uh, products and, and solutions. And for our team, this represents a, a great opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to be in the leading pro AV market segment, which is display products in Australia. Just to put some numbers around that, uh, interestingly, in, in 2016, an Infocom report suggested that display sales in the pro-AV market in Australia had reached a value of about 700 million, up from 450 million in 2012 and 580 million in 2014. The display market segment was growing locally at an above average rate and was comparable to the same market in the United Kingdom, forecast to surpass it in 2017. And Stuart, I hope they were right. Yes, they were we right. await the next report. So for us, as a distributor of commercial and professional AV products, it only makes sense that we would have a partner in the biggest market segment, that being displays. And with these numbers, it's pretty obvious that there's enough market here for a, a famous world-leading brand like Sharp to have a serious market presence, some distribution and uh, some market share. And that's where we want to take this partnership. We share the vision that Stuart and Jonathan and the team have for the brand. And with us having a, a national footprint, distributed sales team, many complementary products and a, a solid back room of marketing, logistics, product management, all the other things that it takes, we believe we can make a, a strong contribution to this partnership. Our history going back a few years was, for those that do know us, we would know it was mainly in infrastructure products. The broadcast market was previously a big focus for us. Technology changes have unfortunately been responsible for slowly shrinking that market, we've had to reinvent ourselves along the way. We've done so with a stable of solid brands, but until now, as Stuart mentioned, we've lacked a partner for information display technologies, despite having a solid presence in digital signage through this Phonetics brand from Switzerland. We now believe, having visibility of the product roadmap that Sharp's been able to share with us, and Daniel touched on this morning, that will remain relevant for a long time with the Sharp brand. And uh, I express our thanks to, to Daniel Stewart and the team at Sharp for the opportunity to be part of this, this journey that we're kicking off now. We'll be undertaking various launch activities over the next month or so, uh, including Technology and Government show in August in Canberra, and of course the Integrate show late August in, in Sydney. And uh, we'll be displaying a range of products that we, we see here along with our uh, complementary solutions. So we hope uh, everyone can, uh, can make it down to the Integrate show. I hope to see everyone there. So once again, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming along and uh, very much uh, our thanks to, to Sharp for hosting us and it's our, our pleasure to be here. So happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Ken. Um, from the technical side of things, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Lee. He's our product manager uh, here at Sharp and he will Run through for Good morning, everyone. Comfortable? Need to drink or anything before I start? Just feel comfortable because I'll be moving around uh, just so you know show you uh, some of the products. So first I want to probably um, start off with uh, giving you guys an overview of our current Sharp uh, 
products and then I'll be moving on to introduce our TC1 uh, series huddle board uh, new range. And then I'll also talk about some of the exciting products to be confirmed in 2019. And then I'll pass on to Graham Hillman, which is uh, uh, a very experienced pre-sales um, guy for us. Um, uh, and he'll be showing you what our products can actually do in the real life. So first of all, interactive touch display. So, um, as you might know, Sharp has a very long history in, um, in uh, pr uh, producing uh, interactive touch displays and, and large format um, panels. So for instance, and we might have the most comprehensive range in the market right now amongst our competitor. So for instance, this board I'm using to present is a 65 inch SC1. It is an infrared touch uh, uh, touch panel and it also have a uh, mini OPS slot which I'll probably cover a little later. And on the other side of this wall, on the left hand side, we have the SC5 series, 68, uh, comes in 60 inch, 70 inch and 80 inch. And on the far side we have the TB3 series, comes in seven, uh, 60 inch and 70 inch. And it also comes with an optional active uh, pen for uh, programming different buttons for, for different usage. Um, it also can track information, uh, position information for about 200 times per second. So to give you that um, smooth operation feel. And last but not least, we also got the 80 inch uh, TC3A, uh, which we don't have in here, which is a capacitive touch screen. Uh, and it supports up to three screens simultaneously as an extended desktop. So to complete our range, we're introducing the 40 TC1 and the 50 TC1s. So this little chart, just to give you a bit of background about where, uh, where we come to this point when we have the 40 and 50 inch touch, is that, as you know, in large boardrooms or meeting facilities, we, you are probably all familiar with the larger size 60 inch or about uh, uh, screens. And on the, the other end of the spectrum, you would have your smartphone or tablet device or desktop uh, or your desktop application for one person or maybe two person. But it seems to be missing something in the middle here where we're talking about probably two to eight people meeting huddle space where we have, uh, um, where the, the viewing distance is about one to two meters. Hence, we're introducing this, this uh, huddle board. It makes a lot of sense for us to do that. So, um, the, the TC1 huddle boards, it comes with the capacitive touch. Uh, not only it brings you the high performance uh, touch operation, but on top of that, it also bundles with a, <coughs> it also bundles with um, two mil uh, touch pen to provide you with the, um, uh, fine writing and also precise drawing if you need to. It also comes uh, with um, a host of expansion boards. So um, Intel Mini OPS uh, expansion boards. So the three flavors that we have uh, is the wireless board, Sepio uh, 3W to give you the wireless connectivity, the HD based T receiver board. Uh, for those who know about this standard, it's basically a, a LAN going across uh, for transmission over 100 meters. And then we also have a PC board that runs Windows 10 for, uh, for various applications to be installed on the PC without extra power cable or extra connections. And on top of that, we also have a range of sharp software uh, to cover a wide range of applications. So we have our sharp hand software, uh, which is basically a whiteboard application which is proven in the in the industry we also have uh, our touch viewing software which is a presentation supporting tool we also got our display connect software um, which is basically a uh, file sharing and content sharing uh, for for your BYOD device uh, application so all those software are actually bundled with the uh, with uh, sharp touch screens we also have the e-signage software, which I'll talk about later, which is our digital signage uh, content management software. And 
moving to the information display panels, I would also like to talk about the, our shop SOC range. Can I maybe have a quick show of hand? Anyone know, heard the term SOC? Great. What about smart TV? Should be a bit more hands on that one. So basically, uh, <coughs> the SOC is basically um, uh, a more heavy duty smart TV where in, on the smart TV, the chipset is probably going to be a bare bone me media player. But in terms of the SOC, uh, systems is basically what we have is a quad core uh, chipset that is installed on the panel so out of the box it can do a lot more than just pure media playing so it can handle a lot more uh, um, demand so the platform that we have chosen is Android platform it is a proven platform and it is also open architect so uh, it's very versatile so uh, our current SOC range, we have two range. We have the PNB range and the PNM range. One is 16.7, 300 nits operation. The other one is 450 nits, 24.7 operation. And currently it comes in two sizes, 40 inch and 50 inch. And later in 2019, we'll be adding a whole, uh, 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 the larger size range in the 65 inch, 75 inch and 85 inch. And it also support wireless content distribution with the card so and the software that I have mentioned the e signage as software uh, uh, it supports a host of different operations and management it can handle uh, you can create layouts you can create a playlist you can distribute to the monitor and also um, you know scheduling and also monitoring the, the display status so we have different uh, versions in the eSign HS to cater for different different needs. And uh, similar to the TC1 series in the in the huddle board, it also supports the mini OPS uh, uh, expansion boards. And to round up the range uh, in the information display panels, we have our PNR series, which is right there. That's the one behind uh, Ken there. That is the PNR series 90 inch. So this is the high brightness 700 nits range. We are unique in the market in terms of the, the size range size. So we have everything from 42 inch to 55 inch and then 60 inch to 90 inch. So uh, in terms of in the market, this is unique. Nobody else has uh, a wider range in the 700 nits brightness section. Uh, Supports thin design and then there's uh, the 06 series, which is the latest one, also support mini OPS. And on the entry level, small size, medium brightness, we have our PNY series. So right here we have our little, the smallest in the range here, this is the 32 inch. Uh, it goes from 32 inch, 43, 49 and 55 inch. So it comes with the inbuilt media player and also, uh, and also bundled with the content distribution software that supports up to 20 screens. And one of the unique things about the PNY series is that, is that it can actually support a host of different orientation. So for example, landscape, portrait, which those uh, panels does, but it can also do tilt up, tilt down, face up or face down. So uh, this is quite unique because um, to be able to do that, you would need to have the ventilation uh, sorted out because if you have, have the face up or face down, the ventilation is, isn't optimized for the heat dissipation. And also, for example, the glass panels, everything, it needs to be made to be able to support that because if the screen of the, the, the screen is too large and if you're doing a face up installation, the glass won't actually support it to, to, to remain flat. So, so this is a unique thing from, from Sharp in terms of the orientation. We also have the entry level P and Q series on the large size, uh, come, uh, ranging from 60 inch to 90 inch, 350 nits, 16 16.7 operation, also with the built-in media player. And also uh, the P and T series uh, in uh, the medium size, medium brightness, larger size, uh, between 60 inch to 80 inch. So, um, 
last but not least, we also got video wall products. Uh, so apart from our workforce, 55 inch, 500 nits, um, 3.5 mil vessel to vessel video wall products, uh, we have a pretty unique size in the market. Uh, at the moment, we have the 70 inch video wall product, which is a 700 nits, 4.4 mil vessel to vessel um, uh, product. And some of the more exciting products which are to be confirmed later this year or maybe early next year would be uh, uh, the digital signage poster in 40 inch. We will soon have a 100 inch information display, uh, probably the largest size in the market. Um, in terms of the system on chip uh, lineup, we will expand to 65 inch, 75 inch and 85 inch. We will also have lineup refresh on in the entry level and also the interactive touch display uh, in the larger size. So uh, that concludes my session and I'll pass on to Graham to give you a bit more um, hands-on demonstration. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning, yes, good morning. I'm Graham. Um, I shan't be doing a PowerPoint presentation. What I hope to do is um, give you uh, three separate examples of how uh, sharp touch panels can both of, with their, in the standard Windows environment and with our additional bundled software improve meetings and office productivity. So I'd, I'd like to start with the um, PN40 TC1 and I think as uh, Jonathan pointed out it comes bundled with a, um, a desk stand. This one is currently um, set up to run an information kiosk, so it might be just sitting in a meeting room telling you something. If you touch the screen, it will, you know, maybe it could be used for guidance. I've just got it to um, explain certain things about the, the touch board. Uh, so, that, that, so, so you can, the screens can be configured you know, to do something while they're not in use, but you could also just have them quiescent and switched off. So if I just go to the Windows desktop, I'd like to um, just sort of cover some of the things that you, know, you can do without any additional software, just in the Windows environment. So for example, say um, we were in a meeting and we wanted to look at the spreadsheet. So you open a spreadsheet, so you should be able to pinch and zoom the image, move it around, uh, but you can also go to drawing, say draw, select pen. Jonathan's taken my style, so <laughs> Thank you. And um, I might sit down if you don't mind. Forgive me, I am actually left-handed. <laughs> uh, so you can write on documents. You can also, if we um, go back to here, uh, say you uh, highlight a particular field and bring up your keyboard, you can actually directly Edit. And that's going to add, it's 175 percent. But so you know, all the Office products, so Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, uh, all support their own annotation capabilities. Um, I'll just show you on PowerPoint just briefly. Choose a pen, and I can actually annotate on the screen. Make 
notes. And when you actually come to leave, you can keep or discard your annotations. It even goes to something as rudimentary as the Adobe Reader. So it's using Windows Inc? Uh, uh, no, it's not actually. Uh, because this particular version of Windows, I'm using the Mini OPS board, which is installed. And I don't know if you noticed on Jonathan's um, presentation, the Mini OPS board comes factory imaged with um, long-term servicing branch of Windows 10 which uh, doesn't support Windows Ink Space, but as we bundle it with our own software for additional annotation functions that would be, which we believe um, more, I wouldn't say more sophisticated, more detailed, you have more functionality than the basic uh, Windows Ink Space. Uh, but even without Windows Ink Space, say I um, go to Tools and Comment, sorry, Open, I can do things like I can highlight text, I can select select a pen and you know you can even uh, write. And once again, when you come to leave it, it will ask you do you want to keep or discard your annotation. So there we go, I'll do that. So Apropos your point of um, Windows Ink Space, we, as I said, bundle our um, uh, screens with three pieces of software. Uh, the first one being the Sharp Pen software. So perhaps if I show you um, something about that. So it can work in a couple of ways. It can work just as a um, a standard whiteboard on which you can write. Uh, it has, as I said, you know, useful features like it can convert text, for example. Uh, you can uh, draw, you know, geometric shapes, uh, either via a preset figure or you can change your um, pen to a figure pen and yeah, set both. Yeah, yeah, it just took a while to work that one out. It depends on how, you know, you've got to be reasonably accurate. Yep. So it will choose, it's not an infinite number of shapes, it will uh, choose between these sort of standard geometric forms. Uh, the other way, I mean, there are many other things you can do. For instance, you can insert images, uh, you can capture the screen. You Once you've um, written your information you can save it as a PDF which you can later attach to an email and excuse me send to people you also have um, what we call the overlay mode and this is um, very helpful to work in with uh, other applications so I started up see the screen is basically transparent so if I minimize it and say um, I uh, go to some sort of uh, video information say I say the old, the old standard wildlife yeah. now there is sound I've just got it turned down so just to prove the point, there's a touch menu, so you don't need the remote to uh, necessarily change things like volume. And this last word. Oh, it's, 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 oh, it's, it's, it's music. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tap it. So at any point you can pause the video and oh, I haven't to, and go back to your overlay mode. Yep. And now you can say choose a pen and you can annotate on top and say drawing a picture of Dale Braithwaite. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, hang on, what have I done? Uh, so I've got 
to turn on the uh, oh, the arrays are function. Sorry. Uh, that is it. Yeah, you have to forgive my uh, rotten writing skills. self-evident but we'll leave it at that <laughs> uh, and then if I uh, go like that I can now um, you see the the annotations have gone away but can you see here they're actually captured so you can capture a lot of still images and then save the whole thing later as you've worked through a video to mark out uh, points of interest that could be done with uh, anything. It could be done with a web page. It could be done with a, uh, you know, a, power, a PowerPoint presentation, though PowerPoint, as you saw, you can annotate directly into PowerPoint as well. And you can still use a mouse if you don't want to be yes, that, you know, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yes, reaching yes, over the screen. Yes, that's, that's true. Yes, you could, of course, do that. That's why you know, you know, I, could be, I could just be doing this as well. Uh, so, yeah, and I suppose it depends on, you know, if, if it's on a wall and you don't have the table in, in, in front, you can stand in front of it. So that, um, as I say, is not an exhaustive demonstration, but it is, a, uh, I think, a reasonable overview of what, you know, you can do with a touch-enabled screen in the standard Windows environment and how our software adds to that flexibility. Just to change the uh, pace a little is bit. That the, is that the IR touch or the capacity? That's capacity. Oh, it's a very good question. Yes, all the <coughs> hoverboard, the 40 and the 50 inch ones, are all uh, capacity of touch. I just wanted to go over here to show that we also have the option, uh, the hoverboards uh, have a similar, uh, you know, like, it's been locked off. So the, the huddle boards uh, can also be put in portrait mode and the software will work in portrait mode. So I just wanted to show that. Also I wanted to show that um, the way you can configure the menus is different. So the software is quite flexible to the orientation of the screen. What I wanted to show now very briefly is a, the uh, touch display connect software just in a, so I'll Try and connect to it. Yep. So it says it's connected. I should have uh, brought that up. So that's my phone here. So now I should be able to do something like uh, that. Cancel. And go uh, say select the camera. Does anyone mind that I take a shot? And now I should be able to also use all being well. <coughs> sort of percolate through the system. And now I should be able to So you can see, so that, that's primarily what Sharp Display Connect does. It's not a presentation, it doesn't push video, it just sends files. Uh, you can just drop a file into a, say I wanted to send a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint presentation, I could simply drop, rather than sending it to the pen software, I could drop it into a folder and then simply open it in the appropriate soft program. Uh, you can send files the other way. For instance, say I wanted you, if you all just download the app on your phone, you could then log in and I could have my PowerPoint presentation sitting in a public file folder and you could all just download it. Or alternatively, you can just watch what I'm doing on the screen and just take a snapshot. And within the actual pen software itself, uh, you should, assuming I'm uh, still connected, 
Let my plan go to sleep. Not a good move. <coughs> you should be able to. Uh, So you can write on the screen. So, but that function to write from the mobile device only works within the pen software. So this is, <coughs> it's not Miracast or no. Google Cast, it's Yeah, it's a unique sharp bit of software. Actually, that's another very uh, good question because we do um, support um, a sharp implementation of, um, what do they call it, MirrorOp, which uh, the Mini OPS wireless board supports. So if I installed the Mini OPS wireless board into one of these machines, you get a couple of advantages. You wouldn't get this sort of functionality, but the board then has what they call a direct draw function. So you can simply walk up to it, go to direct draw, and it's a very simple whiteboard, very much like the Windows Ink Space. You just write on it, you put in a USB into the, and you can save it as a JPEG, and away you go. But then when you once again, log on to it from your mobile device. You can download the software and install the software, and then you can wirelessly present from the wireless device. So say you had a Mac or a Windows PC, it would wirelessly connect both for touch and uh, you know, video. And you could actually, rather than putting cables in, you could actually have your laptop sitting here and do what I was just doing over there without any wired connection and with no actual PC in the monitor, just the wireless board. Refresh rate seems a little low. <coughs> so casting video, have you done? Oh, this doesn't, yes, good, but this does not support video streaming. Uh, say I had it on um, screen sharing and I were playing that uh, wildlife video, and it would, you would get sort of jerky motion because it's not, not, it's not, it's not, <coughs> it's not intended to stream video either way, and there's no sound as well when it, so it's simply screen sharing. So. If someone's doing a PowerPoint presentation, you say, oh, I'm interested in that slide, you just hit capture memo and then you can keep a copy of it. So that's, as I say, just, and now all, all of this you could do on both portrait and landscape mode. And I now like to go over to the last machine to show the third piece of software because I think uh, showing it in a tabletop is an interesting way of showing some of its capabilities. I'll go around the long way. I have to stand on that side because that's the operator's side. to see. So what I've got here is the same monitor, a PN50TC1, and it's installed in the tabletop. Um, and I'm running the third piece of software I'd like to show you, which is Sharp touch viewing software. And fundamentally, I think as uh, Jonathan said, this is a uh, file manipulation and presentation tool. So the sort of scenario I've worked on here is say I wanted to do a sales demonstration for one of these uh, panels. Well, I might say, uh, you know, what particular panel type are you interested in? So uh, I might bring up a PowerPoint presentation on the uh, Turn it, around. Around Turn it around like that. And now the customer can see the PowerPoint presentation. And I can say, um, you know, we have our entry level model, uh, entry, uh, high performance, and premium. But I actually uh, want to talk to you about the premium model today because it's one we haven't actually seen ourselves. So if I just reduce that. Now I can put that over to one side if I want to bring it back later or I could put it back into the drawer. I can also make a copy to give you later should I need to. So I might want to say, well, we haven't actually got a, uh, one of the premium models here, but I might want to, hang on a bit. So I've 
obviously turn the volume up. When it's mounted in a table, you might have external speakers, for example. To the new innovative interactive solution. So at any point, I can stop the video, just as you saw previously, and say, you know, so this is an 80 inch model. I can then take a snapshot of it. So I can take, and then if I just minimize the snapshot, that will go over there and we can get that back later. Uh, I can now delete my annotations at the point and then just proceed on with the video. So it just goes on for a little while, so it won't ne necessarily um, show the whole thing, but it's just interesting for you to just see. So one of the very unique features, well I think it's a unique feature of um, the uh, 80 premium model is the fact that you can use uh, more than up to three monitors at once. So this is good because none of you, we haven't been able to demonstrate this today. We have two monitors here, and bear in mind we can have actually three, so that's a very massive size. And as you can see here, this is a graphic demonstration of its use. So. The, um, so once again, you can make annotations, you could let the video run, you can make commentary. So if I simply pause it and close it. Now, you might have, this might have been very successful, you might say, I'd like to take a brochure with me. So if I go here, I can, uh, that's a brochure. Uh, oh, I've made a mistake, I don't actually have the brochure. <laughs> anyway, um, so you bring out the brochure and at, you can say, well, I'd like to take all these things that we are uh, these snapshots of the points that are of interest to me and the brochure I'd like to take with me. So you simply need to get, say, a USB key, for example. And I, uh, plug it in. And now all I need to do is um, pull it down like that. It will save it in there. Um, Again, save it in there, and save it in there, and then I could simply eject and then give that to the customer to take away. There's also another useful aspect that this is one scenario, but say you had these on the wall in meeting rooms, uh, and we, wanted to, we had all our things laid out and the various files there and we had to leave because this room was booked somewhere else. I can actually export the entire layout, including the original documents, onto a USB stick or to a network drive if it's connected, and then go to another instance of touch viewing software and re-import it and it will just take off where we left off. And so that, that's another, so two possible scenarios for the use of it, this piece of software. So I think, Together, you know, with the pen software, with its basic whiteboard mode and its overlay mode, Sharp Display Connect with its ability to send and receive files uh, and also to allow you to write on the, the whiteboard mode remotely, take uh, memo shots and, as I say, exchange files. And this touch viewing software uh, means that, you know, the Sharp Touch monitors have a particular value will add particular value to the Windows Touch environment on top of the very rich Windows Touch environment which we looked at at the beginning of the demonstration. And that's my, the conclusion of what I have to say. Great, thanks. Thanks, Graham. Um, once again, look, if anybody's got any questions, please um, come have a chat to have a chat to any of us about uh, any of the products. Um, and once again, thank you for your attendance. So please, um, there's some lovely food and things over here. Please uh, 
thank you so for time and um, yeah we can uh, go through anything else and, and have a chat to you once again thanks for coming cheers thank you thank you thanks Stuart.